Welcome to Healing at the Speed of Light. Every week, we discuss how laser therapy is changing healthcare and how you can benefit. Now, here is your host and founder of Laser Therapy Institute, Dr. Jason Roundtree. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Dr. Jason Roundtree, and I'm your host again today. If you're new to the podcast, I'm very happy to have you with us. What we do every week here is we sit down and talk about laser therapy. Laser therapy research, laser therapy uh, interviews with key experts in the field, even just interesting cases that we've had with laser therapy and how well it can work. This particular podcast is sponsored by Laser Therapy Institute, and Laser Therapy Institute's mission is to help educate patients on the benefits of laser therapy, as well as helping to provide education for healthcare practitioners that are either looking to provide or are already providing laser therapy as one of the services in their clinics. So while today we're talking about complex regional pain syndrome, I would encourage you that if you've got interest in what we're talking about here, look back through the other episodes on this podcast or go over to our website, lasertherapyinstitute.org. You can find a lot more information there. Matter of fact, you can even find a Laser Therapy Institute clinic by going to our provider locator map. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into CRPS, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. This is formerly known as RSD, or Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy, and is relatively unknown. In many sources, you'll find it referred to as being very rare. Other sources will say it can occur in 9 to 10% of the population, which is a large number of people. So today I'm going to be using two sources for the information that I bring you. One is mayoclinic.org. That's a really simple, easy one to look at. It's not complete, but it's not designed to be, but it gives you the outline of some of the things we're going to talk about today. And the other resource that I'm using is an article from 2014 published in the Turkish Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. And the title of this article is Effects of Low-Level Laser Therapy and Interferential Current Therapy in the treatment of complex regional pain syndrome. So first, let's get into what CRPS is, because many people have never even heard of this, or if they have heard of it, uh, their doctor may not have heard of it, and it's really hard to get an accurate diagnosis for a lot of reasons. Let's talk about the symptoms first. Number one most common symptom here is severe pain in the extremity, and It'll feel like a continuous burning or a throbbing or a pulsing pain. It'll feel like nerve pain. There can be significant sensitivities uh, to touch or pressure. Even air movement can be extremely agitating. Cold can be very agitating as well. And in many times, the skin can get to looking thinner or shiny. It can change color. You can feel like there's swelling in the area, or you can even have actual uh, swelling there. You can have changes in the joint itself if this goes on for long enough. And you may even be able to see changes in hair growth and fingernail or toenail growth as well. One of the hallmarks here, though, is that it is pain that is disproportionate to what started it. And so that takes us to the causes. We don't know exactly what is going on in the body with somebody with CRPS, but we do know that with most cases, almost every case is going to have a minor or sometimes major injury or surgery that occurs that is then followed by this severe amounts of pain. And again, this is disproportionate Uh, for how long it lasts and for the intensity as to what we'd expect. For example, if you sprain your ankle, we'd expect that to be feeling pretty darn good within 8 to 12 weeks, right? If you sprained your ankle and had onset of CRPS afterward, you'd have severe pain even four months later, which is just not normal or something we would expect. In many cases, the symptoms themselves can even change. Uh, They can vary in terms of the intensity. It can be even changing in terms of the location to some degree. It can spread to affect the joints nearby. And it doesn't stick to the known nerve distributions. So that means that when you tell your doctor about this very severe pain in this location where you had an injury and you describe how it seems to change so much, it's extreme, it sometimes spreads, and it's in this 
area that's not usually connected to a one particular nerve, unfortunately, in many cases, the doctor looks at you and goes, yeah, right. They just won't believe it because it looks like you're making it up. Now, if you've got a history of drug seeking or something like that, maybe they've got good reason to think that, but there are these very legitimate cases of CRPS that don't fit the typical clinical picture. So if this is you, if you have this severe pain, you may have been told multiple times that this is all in your head or it's not a real situation that you need to, um, you know, have any kind of particular treatment for. You just need to get over it or maybe you just need psychotherapy and not to diminish the importance of taking care of your mental health. But if this is CRPS, then mental health is not going to be able to solve this because the actual cause, what we think is going on, is something called neurogenic inflammation or irritation and inflammation around the nerves, sometimes actually sourcing from the nerves themselves. And when you have inflammation on the nerves, you get a couple of things that happens. One, it makes the nerves misfire, so they start to send signals when they're not supposed to. And if that's in a nerve that sends you pain signals, that would obviously generate a lot of pain. If it's in a nerve that controls blood flow to the skin, then you're going to get blood flow changes, color changes, hypersensitivities. Uh, you'll get swelling. If it happens to be in the nerves that go to the muscles, then you'll get muscle stiffness, joint stiffness, uh, aching and spasming in those muscles as well. And it all comes back to this idea that the nerves themselves are inflamed. And anti-inflammatories just don't bring that type of pain down. Not really well, not, not a lot. And without getting too much into the chemistry of how your nerves work, they have a threshold, and they're not really supposed to send those uh, pain signals until they reach a certain level of stimulus. Because you don't want every little bump or pressure to feel severely painful. Right? That's not the way pain nerves are designed to work. They're supposed to let you know when something is really dangerous. But if the nerve becomes inflamed, that threshold becomes much lower, meaning that even small, tiny stimulus will send a pain signal when otherwise it really shouldn't be doing that. Now, the pain is so significant and the treatments are so poor that there's actually been two entire uh, conferences of the International Association for the Study of Pain dedicated to CRPS, and they still haven't been able to produce a good therapeutic protocol for this disorder. Even just getting the diagnosis can be difficult. Now, when you get a diagnosis of CRPS, it's called a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that there's not a particular test. You can't just draw blood and test for CRPS. You can't just take an x-ray and know that someone has CRPS. You have to do your testing and end up with nothing, and then put all this information together and come out with this, maybe it's this particular diagnosis of CRPS, but we don't have a great test that will really tell us that. We really have to look at your symptoms and the absence of other findings to know if this CRPS is really the best fit. Once you have that diagnosis, the treatments really aren't a lot better. The treatments in many cases rely on some medications, which can in some cases help reduce the pain, although always with side effects. There can be additional alternative medicine strategies to approach this, including acupuncture. Physical therapy is extremely common, as a matter of fact, in the study that we're referring back to today. They say that physical therapy is the most significant procedure in the treatment of CRPS. And that, in many cases, means things like uh, hot packs and interferential current and mobilization of the soft tissues when, when it's bearable, mobilization of the joints even as well. The idea with the treatment is to try and reduce the amount of nerve irritation to get this pain levels under control. The next piece of this complex regional pain syndrome is that in many cases there will be a recurrence of pain, often in a different area, sometimes back in the same area, and that can be very frustrating if you're not told about that early on because once you actually do get this under control, to have it flare up again can be really, really depressing, really, really upsetting to think, oh, I had this nailed down and now it's right back to being severe again. Now, I don't want to sound too hopeless here because, again, there are some solutions out there and you just need to understand that every case of CRPS is different. 
and most cases respond differently from each other, so you need to be able to be willing to try several different methods of treatment. That could include medications in some cases, it could include physical therapy, it could include chiropractic or acupuncture, but I would encourage you to definitely look for laser therapy and look for someone who knows how to treat CRPS using laser therapy because in this study we're referring to today, they say the application of laser therapy had a particularly beneficial effect in reducing pain intensity and edema and that no negative effects of the applied therapy were recorded. So if you can have a successful therapy with no side effects, no negative effects, that's even better. The researchers go on to say that laser therapy has specific therapeutic effects such as analgesia or the reduction of pain, anti-edematous or anti-swelling, and anti-inflammatory effects, and improvement of regenerative abilities. Laser therapy has a significant influence on the tone of the sympathetic nervous system with the aim of its normalization. And that takes us back to the idea that the threshold that these nerves are operating at is improper because the nerves are not supposed to send you pain signals until that threshold of stimulus is reached, right? That's why it doesn't hurt to touch a desk, or it shouldn't. But someone with CRPS brushing up against something or even having an, a little bit of air pass over the area that's affected can be extremely painful because those nerves are not operating normally. Laser is specifically said to have an influence on the tone of the nervous system with the aim of its normalization. They also say that it has modulation of pain perception, which is again what we're talking about, the perception of pain here, how, how your body feels pain, what, what that signaling is like, as well as increased production of endogenous opioids. Endogenous opioids are your body's own pain-reducing chemicals. The researchers go on to say, laser therapy blocks the entrance of sodium ions into the cell, which is a stabilizing factor in the cell membrane resting potential, which is, goes back to that threshold idea. And, and if, there's, if you don't have the proper balance of sodium ions, then you end up with that improper uh, signaling when it shouldn't be signaling. The researchers also say that laser has anti-edematous and anti-inflammatory effects, and by increasing local microcirculation, Laser reduces the edema, increases tissue oxygenation, and facilitates elimination of allergenic substances. Allergenic substances means the things that create pain signals. Now, in my practice, we've gotten to be pretty darn good at helping people with CRPS and really reducing the pain uh, to the point that most of the time, uh, someone comes to us with CRPS, we get them fixed up, and they're back out the door within a few weeks. Uh, of treatment, and then when they do have a recurrence, when something happens, they can come back and see us. In many cases, it's just a few visits, a few visits of laser therapy to get that pain back under control. I'm thinking right now of one particular patient that was referred to us for her diagnosed CRPS. She'd had it for a couple of years, and it started after she had iced her leg a lot following a surgery, and she felt like the ice had really contributed to this, this kind of hypersensitivity that was going on. And hers was so severe that you couldn't breathe on the leg. It couldn't have a pant leg on it, but you also couldn't have air movement. So she was miserable a lot of the time because the pain is just really, really severe. We were able to work with her, and within just, a, I think, a few weeks, we had her in great shape where she was feeling amazing. Almost every treatment, the area and the intensity of pain on her leg reduced and it got less and less sensitive. Once we got her to where she was feeling great, we turned her loose and then we saw her a couple months later after she had fallen on the ice and it had that recurrence. That impact had started a new episode of this CRPS pain again in a different spot on the same leg but in a different spot. But that case, because we got to it so quickly, we were able to get it resolved within, I think, three or four visits. It was really, really fast. And that's another factor here. The longer you have CRPS going on, the harder it is to fix. So if you are struggling with this right now, and it's already been a while maybe, or you're not convinced you have an accurate diagnosis, 
I would strongly encourage you to pursue that good diagnosis and then treatment. And treatment could involve laser therapy. If you're undergoing treatment and it's not satisfactory, you're not really getting better like you feel like you should be, definitely look into laser therapy. Again, you can find a Laser Therapy Institute clinic near you by going to our website, lasertherapyinstitute.org. You can also get in touch with us there, and we can help you find someone that can evaluate your situation. I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope to be able to talk to you again next week. Subscribe to this weekly podcast for more great information. Find a certified laser therapy clinic near you at lasertherapyinstitute.org. If you're a healthcare provider, check out our practitioner-focused Laser Therapy Institute podcast. Thanks for listening.